Hi everyone, this is my first video that has an actual voiceover, so I apologise beforehand if this sounds very janky. Um, as many of you may know, my name is Inno, I go by that name on Twitter and YouTube, and one of the most requested videos um, that people have asked me for in the comments here and over on Twitter is how I do my art. Specifically, how I do the cool rendering and um, painting stuff that I do with my drawings. Um, I should warn you before we start the video, I am in no means a professional or someone you should trust in following the method that I'm tell telling in this video. But I hope this helps in some way to you and I hope you enjoy. Without further ado, let us begin the video. Sorry from the speed paints that are already on my channel, you can probably tell that I use Clip Studio Paint Pro as my main program to draw with. Depending on the drawing, I'd have varying sizes in the canvas, but I usually stay between the 2000 to 3000 pixel range for um, dimensions. What I have up on the screen right now is just showcasing my tools that I use and some of the pens that I use. I use the default G pen, a soft round tool that by Mark Brunette on YouTube, it's free to download, and a wide round Photoshop brush that I just imported from Photoshop. For tools, I use the blend tool, gradient tool, and lasso tool since I'm a very lazy person and can't be bothered to do shadows most of the time. Going in not really any particular order, what I use the soft round tool for is just to make line art and sketches. As you can see on screen, I'm just doing a little doodle of character just using the soft round brush as I usually do. Before the speed paint, I'll just show you a quick demonstration how I actually colour and render. My process can basically be sectioned into three steps, or four technically. Uh, the base, gradient plus colour, major shadows and then all the minor shadows afterwards with blending. The first thing I do is use the select tool to outline the base I want to render or colour. I go in with the G pen to correct any spots I missed as you can see since you can never really get the best with the select tool. Uh, I use this tool most of the time since it's just quicker than going in by hand then lining with the pen and then filling it in with the paint bucket tool. However, when there is line art involved, I will just go in with the G pen and do slap in the fill bucket, you know. Next up is gradient and colour. I'll adjust the colour of the base with just the fill tool and use the gradient tool to add the colour quickly. I think it just makes clothing especially a lot more interesting and varies the colour palette instead of just a flat base. And it gives me a better idea of what to work with with shadows afterwards. The last step slash third step is that I just add in the shadows which give the base the form. On the same layer I begin blocking out the major shadows using the lasso tool again. And this is a good step just to make sure you know what, uh, what you're working with, adding in that contrast to really give that shape on the object. I then soften the shadows uh, with using the blend tool which really nails that softness we need in clothing. And I also use the soft round tool again to achieve the same effect as the blend tool on like, like the edges to give that three dimensional effect. And from here on I'll just speed the video up so you can just see my process a bit quicker and just see the other two examples that I provided and how I used the following method onto those. And with this tank top kind of thing, um, I'm just doing the exact same as what I'm doing with what I did with the blue sleeve. I'm adding in the major shadows, with the gradient, uh, causing a bit more variation in the colour. And then I'm really just going in again to add a bit more highlight. With the red one, it's even simpler. Uh, first, blocking out the shadows of the curves, and then I'm adding uh, the shadows in between the pleats. I should also mention I'm really doing the highlights the exact same way as I'm doing the shadows, using select tool, blend, easy, right there. If I'm not using any line up with the base, I just put go into the layer properties and add in an outline on the layer, and yeah, it's a simple way of kind of adding line art without actually doing it, so yeah. Since this video's primary uh, idea was just to show you how I render, I'm just going to quickly skip over the line art, sketching, and how I do that. 
Maybe in the future I'll make another video about it, but uh, let's get right into it. First things first, right before I begin my actual colouring and rendering, I do a rough colour and shading of what I want the end result to look like. This isn't what I usually do, but it gives me a sense of direction that I like in my life. Of course, since I'm most competent in rendering face and hair basically, I usually start with that first, and also it's kind of like the main thing, my main focal point of the drawing, so I tend to do the most detail around there. As you can see, I did actually do a bit of line art prior, but I didn't do like the extra stuff like the brush on the back and the scarf and uh, whatever the hell the hands and feet were. I think it's just, I, I find it easier to just block those colours in, just like what I did prior in the example. And as you can see, I just merged the line layer on top of the face one, just because it's easier to work with um, than on separate layers, because that means you can actually edit it while you're drawing, instead of just waiting at the end and doing the overpainting. Right here you can really see me using the select tool uh, as a really good way to colour and block out the shadows really easily. So I'm really not sure like where I should put the shadows first, I just added in where I think they would be and corrected it with the G pen afterwards. Just a quick side note, this character is not mine, I do not own them. It is fan art of uh, Ink Sense by Comiet slash MyB on Tumblr. I'm not sure how to say your name but it's on the screen right now. Uh, just adding on to this, I am I really love working with the colour white. It's my favourite one to work with because it's a blank state, you can add any colour you want and that's where you can just go ham on the colours and make it look like you kind of know what colour there is. Which I, I do know a bit of, but like, you know, I'm kind of bullshitting it while I'm going so, you know. <laughs> anyway, rendering is just going from large colours, the general idea, to uh, to the more finer details. That's really just what rendering is and that's what I'm doing with um, making my brush smaller and also merging the layers together. So I didn't mention this previously but uh, merges, merging the layers together does mean you can really go in with the fine details and not worry about being confined by the line art. It's um, something very convenient to do and this means I render while I go. So. <laughs> Really, I think it's probably easier to just colour everything first and then render, but um, yeah, I just, just to, this, is, this is why you shouldn't follow what I'm doing. Although I rarely do use um, the layer properties like um, multiply, add, dodge um, onto the shadows, I do think it's useful sometimes just to think when you've already got the gradient and you don't really want to change the colours with that, I just add it on top. Also because pleats are hard to do and I was like, okay, maybe maybe I should actually do some line art here. Uh, here's a quick pro tip, just outline anything with the, with the lighter colour if you want to make it just look very sharp and pristine. I don't know, it just kind of makes it look better. I'm not sure why, but it works for me. So as you can see, I'm just lining the um, pleats with the, uh, with the lighter colour because, you know, uh, it kind of looks bad when you zoom in, so as long as it looks fine when you zoomed out, it's all good. Also, another tip, if you just don't really know where else to put a shadow or that that like place of the clothing looks a bit empty just put just slap in the shadow color just like what I'm doing here on the pleats I'm just putting it in between uh, with like the highlighter lining it inside this it kind of breaks up the color a bit and you can see I used it on the white as well 
Uh, I guess, meh, I'm not sure. I think it's something to do with the texture, but it just looks a bit more, you know, pristine. I, I say that word a lot, but, but it does look clean. Uh, in this segment, it's a really good example of how, um, since I'm not bothered to do any proper lining in the beginning, I just do the shapes right afterwards. I think it's just really like a lot simpler to do with just adding in the shapes with the select tool. And yeah, I, I guess this is just my way of um, rendering, but uh, try it out if you want. Like, especially if you hate line art, I think it's a really good um, exercise to just draw out the shapes and go from there instead of just focusing on lines. You can see me right here just using the same uh, trick I, I used before with um, just using the line, um, the outline thing that's in layer property to really add in those details and make it look probably a bit more detailed than it actually is. Again, I've also added in the highlight uh, line on the side just to make the uh, detail pop out a bit more. But yeah, it's really with details you just you can fake it because um, it's really small and you really don't need it to be honest. One thing that I do want to talk about with colour is if you, if in doubt, just go with the opposite colour on the colour wheel. So um, on the colour wheel to the top right, I'm just picking what's directly um, opposite of it. Uh, alternatively, you can just go to like a grey colour on the same um, hue. But it, it just varies it up a little and that's um, that's also what's achieving that kind of blue look, that blue light look that's in the dark areas. It looks nice, I think. <laughs> um, I really probably will do a video on shading metal because it's my favourite thing to do. <laughs> But uh, just a little tip with um, shading metal, you're really using um, the complementary colours of uh, say gold or metal or like the silver, um, silver with like the blue tint really helps um, make that um, metal look really metallic. <laughs> that sounds obvious but yeah. And uh, adding that really saturated edge to the highlight of the gold, so like right where you put the almost white colour of the highlight. This is kind of what happens when you use color dodge as a blending um, layer. So instead of using color dodge, you're just painting it yourself. At this point of the drawing, I've kind of just finished most of the rendering with the colours and now I'm just going in and adding those final details. I've also just merged all the line layers by this point and it's just me um, adding in those extra overlays, um, sorry, the overpaints and um, those little details in the end. Other than that, I'm basically finished. All I needed to do was the background and I messed around with the background a bit. Uh, honestly, pro tip, make sure you do the background first or plan it out first. I had no idea what I was doing here. So I was just, I just messed around with like layer properties and found something that kind of worked. It's, it's not my favorite type of um, background that I've done before, but I guess it works. Here I'm just adding the final things, so I wanted an outline on the character just to make it pop from the background. I'm just adding a bit of text, just to give it a bit more um, difference. 
but I guess that's all for、um, the actual rendering. In the final stages, I'm just going in with my tonal corrections. Um, or and adjusting the brightness and contrast to really make the drawing pop out a bit more.、Um, always, it's always great to have contrast in your drawing. It just makes everything seem a bit more brighter or、um, a lot more poppy outy. Yeah, I, I'm saying pop out too much, but I guess you guys get the,、um, get what I'm saying right now. It's also kind of why I use、uh, sharp edges with shadows first because that really gives that extra contrast. And right now, I've just finished the drawing.、Um, other than that, thank you so much for watching. I've had a—it's been a great time just making this video. To be honest, I really want to do some more in the future. So, if you did want to see a tutorial on like color, hair, clothing,、uh, skin tone, maybe、um, leave a like, maybe comment it down in the comments. I'm not sure, but anyway, have a good one, guys.